Thank you. Can you hear me fine? Great, great to be here. Uh, so, I mean, we already met you, Marita, a bit, but uh, let's start with a short introduction. Uh, my name is Hannah. I'm from a company here based in Gothenburg called Trine. What we essentially are trying to do is to change the way we invest our money. Uh, we connect private individuals and companies that, that believe that we need to have triple impact on our investment. That means social, environmental, and financial return. And we connect them with uh, companies in emerging uh, and frontier markets who are currently building up a completely new infrastructure driven by mobile money, driven by tech, and they are providing the one billion people around the world that currently lack access to electricity. Uh, so that's the small vision we have for the company, to get all of you to really think about how, how do we create a service that is truly better, not only in terms of goodwill and nice purpose, but actually can beat the way we've traditionally invested our money, or some of us m maybe haven't done that uh, at all, because it's not so much fun always to go into your bank account or look at the funds or stock market. Kaisa, yes, who my are you? Yeah, my name is Kaisa, uh, I'm from Finland, uh, Senior Vice President for Pauli Group, uh, uh, headquartered in Finland, international food and beverage company. In Sweden, we are mostly known for our Santa Maria and Resenta brands. And um, sustainability, it's really important for me personally and also for the company. I think that everything that we do today, we should think it so that it would be also good for the future generations. So I think that's how I define sustainability. And uh, working in the food, food industry, I think the key question is that how we can kind of, um, how we can offer tasty food so that it's good for the people and the planet. So uh, it was very interesting to hear uh, Marita's uh, speech about their, their story. And we are also a family owned company. So we also have this longer term perspective. And uh, I have often talked with the owners also. They say that their time perspective is eternity. So, so yeah. basically, if your time perspective is like that, sustainability is quite a natural thing to do. Yes, and you all met me before, uh, and uh, I also work at the Communication and Sustainability Department at Max, and I, we work closely, of course, with the other departments, but uh, the focus is a lot to talk about and to do more sustainable actions, and uh, I think we will get more into the details. Definitely. What, what do you, why do you, uh, both of you, uh, feel that, do you think it's hard for companies to work with sustainability, and if it is hard, why is that? I, I think for, for perhaps for smaller companies, it can be hard to get started because you don't really have the resources or perhaps you don't have the know-how how to get started. Um, but uh, from my point of view, it's like riding, learning how to ride a bike. You, you cannot learn how to ride a bike if you just sit and look at it. You have to get on it and start, you know, pedaling and, and holding the steering wheel and so on, and really try to work with sustainability. Um, so I, I think that's, you know, just the will to learn gets you quite far. Do you think companies are a bit afraid to, because also of what you put up here was maybe a good example of that you kind of get criticized no matter what you do? So if you try to do something that can propel the discussion about uh, why, why wouldn't a green burger be a tasty burger, for example, uh, is that a, a challenge for companies? I, uh, yes, of course it, it could be, because uh, if you don't want to risk your reputation, right? You want to, to have a good reputation and to be a credible uh, partner as a business partner or for your customers and so on. But... Um, from what I see now going on in the world uh, is that corporate activism is growing stronger and stronger. The consumers today, don't, they don't really lean on the politicians to fix uh, sustainability actions. They lean more on themselves and also on companies. Uh, and there was a recent study that I, I uh, was reading just this week, which was presented. It, uh, 
uh, it was actually for young people in Sweden between 18 and 35 years old. And it was Ungdomsbarometern and Young Relations who did this survey in June. And 83% of these young people said they want companies to take responsibility. They lean on companies to be sustainable. So sustainable brands is a must today. And uh, so I, I don't think we have a choice really as, as a company or as entrepreneurs not to do it. Yeah, I, I feel the same. And I also think that sustainable brands can have a huge power in changing things. So I think uh, it's it's great way to do meaningful work also to, to participate in these sustainability efforts. Uh, and, you, and to your question about the, is it easy or difficult, I, I think um, it might be more difficult for companies who have a long history and whose sustainability, um, whose business is not sustainable uh, at the moment or it has not been. If you are a startup and you start a new business, it's probably sustainable already, but transforming your whole business model to be sustainable, it might be a bigger effort. And uh, um, uh, previously, I also worked for a company, a fuel company, which uh, um, changed from fossil fuels to renewables, and it took 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this time, it's really, it was really important to understand that you have to communicate about the future, where you are going, and uh, understand that you are not ready at the moment, and you don't have to wait until you are ready that you can start communicating mm -hmm. about it. So, so even though you need to have the evidence <laughs> that you are not just talking, you don't have to be perfect. Yeah, exactly. and I think that's a really good point to make. I always make it because we're a, a business based on profit with purpose. So this whole question about earning money, can you do it? We say yes, of course, because that's the fundamental nature. If we are going to transition, we need businesses that earn money because otherwise they're not going to be here in the long run. Uh, and we need to stop uh, being ashamed of the fact that we are building successful business. But I just wanted to do a live opinion poll here in the room. How many here that works with communications and marketing are also actively working with product development, actually feeding into the team of your revenue streams, of your business model? Raise a hand. Not that many. No. I, I would say that because we do get a lot of questions. I saw here one, for example, regarding greenwashing. And at least from my point of view, I think it's also time to not only start talking about how we can talk with consumers and how we can talk with media, but also think about the simplest way to become sustainable is to look into what kind of revenue streams do we have? How is our business model looking? And if it's not sustainable, if that's not a part of that business, it's going to be extremely hard for you to actually push in sustainability in it. Because you're going to end up in the boardroom or you're going to end up on the Monday planning meeting when you have two initiatives. And you're going to look at this one we know is going to give us uh, sales or is going to drive conversion. This one is a nice good feel, like uh, we have a good feeling about it. It would be nice to do a, a climate strike, but we have no idea how that's feeding into our manufacturing b business. And I think already there you are, you will have so hard time buy getting the buy-in. And at Trine, what we're trying to do, and I think that goes the same, is that we don't see a silo between us working with communication, the tech team, uh, and the one sourcing our, in our case, loans fr from the companies in emerging markets, because they need to work very in integrated with each other. Um, what's your thoughts around yeah, building it yes, in most there. definitely i mean it, it goes in everything uh, it's not a sustainability is not just you know se separate part of the company it has to be all through the company and how we build the restaurants for instance and and so on and also but also i was thinking a lot about we talk about here a lot about the from from my point of view i've been talking a lot about uh, the climate but I think sustainability is so much more and how to take responsibility. And I would advise actually a company who is really, you know, you know how to approach this area. I would say, uh, look at the sustain uh, sustainable development goals, uh, agenda 2030, because then there you have 17 goals that you can work with. And you will probably see that a lot of them you already do work in as a company. You know, it fits in, in many areas. So um, that is a good way to, to approach the area if you think it's, it's complex and big. 
Yeah, I also think that the SDGs are important and a good framework, but I also think that we, we as communicators should help the organization to choose one of the topics that is the most important for you, like you had the beef. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our case, it's probably the raw materials that we use for our products and, and so on. So I, I think that it's good to go to your DNA, what is in your DNA, what is the impact of your products and uh, services, and uh, then think about also what is relevant re relevant for the society so mm. stand for something big choose don't try to be everything at the same time so I, I that would be my advice but I, I fully agree with you also that uh, it should go into the product development mm. as well and I have to I, I have a goodie bag with me I went to a <laughs> supermarket yesterday and uh, I, I searched for like a hero products from our, our product portfolio. So this is not product placement, but I just want to show <laughs> what it uh, could it, be. It's like fine. you need to it's choose. public service. Yeah, so so you, you don't have to have like all your products uh, completely sustainable already. But uh, for example, we have the uh, new tortilla packaging, which mm. is like, uh, which has also paper. Uh, we have replaced uh, plastic with paper so we can reduce environmental imp impact of the packaging. And we told that it's um, uh, 150 tons of C uh, plastic uh, less, uh, which equals six million bottles, plastic mm. bottles. So basically, mm. then you also need to make these comparisons what it means. Another example of sustainability present of products, they are healthy and natural. So sustainability can be also like what, what is good for you. Mm. And the third example is our coffee. You don't have this in, in Sweden, but Finland we are, uh, in Finland we are the biggest uh, coffee producer. Mm. So this uh, coffee, for example, comes from uh, sustainably certified uh, coffee beans and uh, it's uh, organic and, uh, and also the packaging is uh, 45% renewable. So basically, you need these uh, examples uh, of your sustainability work, uh, otherwise you cannot be authentic. Is it more expensive on the market in comparison to the... This, co this coffee is a little bit more expensive, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, like maybe 50 cents or something like that, so yeah. Do, because do you, uh, in, in your work, do you find that it's also a challenge to get the consumers to truly believe that what you're doing is not just a mimic, it's not just jumping on the Greta trend, so to speak, or, um, yeah, or you just position yourself as better than you are? I know the headline was Boost, which I think is a bit, uh, I don't know if it's about boosting really, it's about transforming, but... Um, I, I don't think, I think, for Max, anyway, it has the, the, our guests have really got the picture. And also when we did, the, as I showed, the Green Family launch, which was a huge success, and we also attracted a lot more guests to our restaurants that hadn't been there before because they were vegetarians or vegans and so on. So, and also, um, so I, I, we feel anyway that the consumers get it. Mm. Uh, but then there are opinion leaders, there are politi politicians, and, and so on. And, and sometimes they're, you know, they're researchers and, and uh, scientists, and, and they perhaps have a, they work with their area. And it's it's a piece of the puzzle that is important. Mm. But I think what is important, and also you were mentioning greenwashing. I think what is important is that we we look at the bigger picture, actually. And why do we always have to misinterpret or think that a company who is a for-profit business is doing something only for their own profit? I think we have to switch that kind of, you know, mindset in the whole society. Because, there are, as I said, the, the young people today believe in companies to take responsibility. And if we have them believing in us, we should take advantage of it and say, okay, let's step up. We are responsible, but we're not only doing this to make ourselves profitable, we do it because we actually want to make a change in the world. You know, we want to be a part of that change for real. And we just don't say it because it, it sounds good. It's not a tick in the PR box we're talking about. It's a change really, <laughs> you know, to make the world better. And I think we ha that mindset, why does, there are so many people, you know, thinking, oh, you just want to earn more money. Yes, we want to earn more money so we can invest even more in the future and do make a change for real. So 
take a look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I would say to those that, you know, narrow down and, and want to criticize all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm also a huge fan of uh, Aftel Aziz and Thomas Golster. I don't know if you know them, but they, they both talk about uh, sustainable brands and purpose-driven brands. And their idea is that you should, rather than uh, use your marketing money or for advertising, you should use it for doing something good and get the publicity from that. So I, I think that's also something to think about that next time you are doing a uh, okay, this is a room full of communications people. You don't probably do so much marketing, but maybe you can challenge the marketing people as well. That how about investing this money to to a sustainable experiment or or something that uh, we can engage with our stakeholders uh, or something like that. Uh, so. But yeah. I would also challenge that a bit, yeah. actually, in terms of, because I, when I read the headline here, uh, thank you for the invite, but I am so, I hope that actually corporate social responsibility, as the term we've gotten to know it, uh, is dead soon. Because I think for mm. me, what it represents, being kind of in the, between the Gen Z and uh, millennial generation, is that we see through it. Uh, I think you've seen too many examples where you have all good will intended, and I don't say stop trying, but I say that <laughs> let's look again at the bigger picture, and it's not enough actually for companies to say that you're doing this thing as your core business, and then on top of it you throw something completely random, to be honest, uh, that is not changing the way you make money, it's not changing the way where you prioritize, and, and for me that's what corporate social responsibility mm -hmm. for a long time has been been. I do hope we can see a new, I think I heard it the other day, um, a new way of looking at capitalism, where mm -hmm. capitalism understands that mm -hmm. it's not, profit can be many things. Profit needs to make sure we have a planet to live on in exactly. a couple of years. Uh, it needs to ensure that we have financial means to, to live on this planet, and it needs to include all the people in this planet. Exactly. And I think uh, that's just uh, some food for thought to put out there. We've got one question. and I, I, I couldn't have said it better. So. <laughs> uh, we've got one question here. And because, again, as communicators, we know that it's not only about perception. Perception is really, really important. But it's also about how can we prove that? Like, how can we actually backtrack what we do? So we've got a question around do, how do we measure this and how do we set good goals for working then with sustainability? Kaisa, you mentioned the SDGs, but do you have tangible examples how you work at your company with? Uh, actually, we are currently creating a new approach because we used to be led as uh, individual uh, companies like Santa Maria was one company, Resenta was one company. So now we are creating a group level uh, sustainability approach and we use uh, SDGs as a framework, to, as a foundation mm. for our own framework. So then we will probably have three focus areas and under each uh, focus area we have a target, like a longer term goal towards which we, we will be working on so so yeah so that that's our way of doing it uh, we are doing the climate analysis uh, now I only talk about the climate park because actually for max we, we work with sustainability within three areas and it's health uh, fairness which includes a lot about the social sustainability and then we we work with the employers uh, employees mm -hmm. uh, and to include more in the hiring more people that otherwise have difficulties finding jobs, such as people with uh, intellectual, intellectual disabilities and uh, newly arrived to Sweden. But anyway, and then it's environment. And when it comes to environment, we, we have set a goal that by 2022, 50% well, of the every, sold, every other sold meat at max will be something else than red meat. Uh, and then we have we know that we will have decreased our climate impact in with 30 percent uh, over seven years which is in line with the paris agreement so we look a lot about the paris agreement and the greenhouse gas protocol when it comes to this so we also um so the climate analysis and the greenhouse gas protocol and also following uh, when it comes to, to zero net, we follow the ISO standard 14,021. So I think you need to have, you know, you have to keep track of these things and also to have a third party verify and certify what you're doing. So you're not only, 
you know, you hire somebody to do this analysis, but you also need a third party to revise it. So you're really sure that you have had an ob objective opinion about what you're doing is right. Um, because then it makes, then you have the measurements also to see where do we go wrong and how can we improve? Because <laughs> as you said, we're not perfect and mm. we're far from perfect, but we, we're working every day, you know, to make it a little better. Yeah, and I think that is a good learning because <laughs> me coming from a very small company with 21 people today and we're founded four or five years ago, uh, roughly. Uh, and what we do when we estimate the impact an investment has is that we look at, uh, try to do it very, very simplified because it is hard when you start up with something and you don't want to give the greenwash impression and you don't want to promise things that you actually cannot back up. So what we do is that we look at the companies we work with who's deploying solar home systems and similar in, say, Kenya, in Pakistan and so on. And we look at it and say, Okay, so one system is estimated to replace this amount of kerosene, this amount of diesel, this amount of petrol, for example. And then we just do a very simple calculation on that, which we show to all our investors. And we keep it public because we also believe that we're not an expert necessarily. We know the market, but we're also learning as we go. Uh, and we have always thought that a approach to this is that it's better to try. <laughs> it's better to show this is the numbers. We, d we won't say that this is the best uh, environmental and social investment you can do. Uh, we want our investors to judge that. So if they look at our calculations or if they think, oh, so you estimate one system can reach five people in rural Kenya, and they're just like, no, I, I know this, and I don't believe that. Well, then we think it's great that they are the judge of our work, and instead of us trying to like say that this is the truth and this is the way you should uh, do it. And I think that also is one thing to learn as a company, especially when you work with communication, this um, North Star of trying to find what's wrong and what's right and what's the absolute truth is a very, very challenging path to go on because mm. you will always face opposition and you, w and you might also uh, realize that you need to be a bit humble. Mm. Uh, I think that's yes, also really exactly. good. Instead of, uh, instead of saying that we've found a formula, it's better to say this is what we're working on, please help us to be better um, and c push more industries uh, uh, in this kind of like just start so uh, because I think what you mentioned and both of you kind of having a long history as a company uh, a lot of resources of course and now when they are propelled to sustainability uh, I think uh, for if there's any smaller companies sitting here or companies who haven't done so much it can be a bit scary to hear about the ISO mm -hmm. and hear about the climate, like the frameworks, and you start just like, where should we start? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, I have also heard many presentations saying that actually for the smaller companies, it's easier. It's mm -hmm. easier for them because they might start from a, from a low level mm -hmm. and it's also quicker to do those things because they don't have operations in many countries and big factories and so on. So I think I would encourage everyone to start. I, I don't think it would go wasted mm. you know, the resources but I still have something about the figures and uh, and uh, targets and everything I think they are extremely important and we need them but I, I don't think it's uh, either or so basically I still think that we need to inspire consumers and uh, employees and everybody with the great storytelling great story doing and and uh, really even though I don't know maybe the discussion is more critical here in Sweden but uh, I, I feel that uh, we should take the kind of the risk of uh, being uh, accused of greenwashing yeah. but we should inspire people because otherwise we cannot uh, change the uh, consumers um, actions and uh, their perceptions and everything so I think that we also need to invest in uh, in great storytelling and story doing mm. uh, would you still work with sustainability even if society wouldn't require it even if the politicians or the media or consumers would actually demand it of course yes. yeah I, I don't think Please that elaborate <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first of all, I think that, like I said in the beginning, I think that we wouldn't have any food and we wouldn't have any people or anybody here in the in the planet if we don't do anything, for example, in the climate uh, aspect. So I, I really think that that's the right thing to do. So I would definitely 
work work with sustainability and it's also a lot about uh, efficiency improving efficiency mm. and uh, it can also create uh, more profits even yes and and uh, f uh, for max point of view i think it's in our dna i mean the head owner kurt bergfors who is 70 years old now and is still active in the company he has always you know um, had a heart for these questions and, and started to work very early when all when he was founding mm. the company, and uh, also that uh, he he feels very much for the for to end poverty actually. So nine percent of Max is actually owned by a foundation to fight poverty. So we have we're not talking about this a lot, but now we are allowed to talk about it. And uh, so we have like a chi children's village in Senegal that is, so when you go to Max and you buy a burger, you know that always seven to 10% uh, of uh, Max net profits goes to this foundation. So there's an entire medical clinic and, and the, uh, kindergarten and uh, children's school in Senegal and as well as in Haiti. They have several medical clinics that are run by money from Max that you as customers has contributed to. So thank you for that. Uh, and uh, so I think when it is in the DNA or when it is, you know, like a driving force, you cannot just stop doing it because it's, it's what you really mm. want to achieve as a person or as yeah. a company. I remember actually one of my colleagues saying a long time ago, just when we were starting out, that, okay, so if, if you go to work or if you build your business, uh, time is valuable, right? We all know that here. You only have so much time and you spend a lot of it working today. A lot of people find actually joy in their work, f thank God for that. But why would you then spend it and not get maximum value from it. So say, uh, in our case, it means the triple bottom line, people, planet, profit, and to not say that one aspect is more important than the other. So it's almost like uh, a sales commercial in terms of thinking around it, that if you could have f all three of them, why would you settle for only one or two parts of it? And I think that's really, for me, the question to that, uh, or the answer to that question about would you work with it? Because I think we, if we can, we should strive for optimization, right? We should do things smarter. Um, we, the human brain hasn't really evolved in, in many thousand years, but our society has. And hopefully from that, we've drawn some uh, smart conclusions that we can actually do it smarter. We can find ways where we, we don't only focus on one perspective or one thing. Um, and I think that can assess it. Um, we, we got one, I don't know, how we are doing on time here, but uh, obviously we could sit here all day, talk about <laughs> sustainability, business, communication. Uh, what would you say in terms of, if you could just say one sentence about sustainability, given that it is such a buzzword to some degree, like data, I would argue, uh, what would you say? How would you conclude? Kaisa, would you like <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, like I said in the <laughs> beginning, that I, I think yeah. that sustainability is uh, doing your, your work so that it's good also for the future generations. So that's my, my own mm. definition of, it, of that. Yes, uh, sustainability for me is to take responsibility uh, and to do conscious choices also. And um, it's all just... That was a difficult question, just to summarize it in, you know, in one sentence. But I think uh, also to, as an advice, um, perhaps to, to choose one or, th one or two things that really make a difference, even though it's a bit painful and it, and it costs a lot of money, perhaps, or whatever. But, you know, that really makes a change for the mm -hmm. better. So um, I think we have to take step by step, but once in a while to be a bit brave as a company and to take the, you know, to, to take the leap, uh, because I, I'm sure it will pay off. In that many was ways. more than <laughs> one sentence, but definitely it is complex, right? And I think one thing I've started to, to reassess a bit, because first you kind of start with the textbooks and what's written and, and research, but it's also a way I see sustainability today is a way to future-proof. Whatever you do, if it's your personal life or if it's the business life, it's a future-proof, because again, if we don't uh, actually incorporate this in our DNA, no matter if we're an individual or business, uh, we, we might not be in, around in, in the future, more or less. 
Um, and then I think last thing I would love, I, I hope we can continue the discussion. Uh, obviously, we all have very many opinions about this, which I think is great to spark the discussion. But what would you, for everyone here going back to the business, thinking around this, uh, uh, struggling sometimes with it, what, any advice you would give in terms of how you as a communicator can, can work with sustainability and incorporate it in the business and in the strategy? Yeah, obviously I, I work with uh, sustainability and communication, so for me it comes naturally and I also, <coughs> I also consult our businesses and, and uh, yeah, everybody about sustainability. So, so basically that's, I think that's the way to go that uh, you need to integrate sustainability into your business and strategy and brands, whatever you do. But uh, as a communicator, I think it's very important that uh, communicators works, work as a link between the society and the company. Mm. Because basically, oftentimes it happens that we come quite um, blindsided what is happening outside and uh, there might be a lot of uh, new phenomenon, new public discussion, or whatever, what is happening outside. and. And the business people, they are just following their action plans and, uh, and targets and so on. So I think it's very important that uh, communications people can challenge and bring the insights from outside in and uh, drive the uh, change uh, within the organization and uh, also help to understand what is the paradox or problem here. And, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe it can also create change. Uh, I will try to stick with one sentence now. <laughs> uh, I would say that go home and write your sustainability story. You know, do the storytelling by yourself. You know, you're all communicators. Write your the sustainability story of your company and how you would do it as as a communicator. And uh, then be a bit daring. Publish it. <laughs> you know, perhaps on LinkedIn. Or something, just to, you know, to, to ignite that spark in the company, because you you can really be you know the one doing a big change as a communicator, because communication is one of the most important tools we have. Mm. I'm gonna cut in really fast just to ask one more question. Um, so I, I know that there's been a lot of talk, and I've seen this happen uh, throughout the um, some of the talks yesterday and today. Um, I I want to also and so so I, Hannah, I want to add to your last question. Uh, is are there, what's your piece of advice? I guess it's kind of a twofold for not seeming, like Kaiser, you brought up, like not, um, not wanting to, like you need to be authentic. Um, so you definitely want to, you know, follow those up with like, this is what we're doing. How do you position yourself as a brand, um, you know, to not appear like you're greenwashing or not appear like you're putting sustainability on your website without really defining it or without really doing much about it. On the flip side, what do we need to kind of take away to be empowered and not just, oh man, there's so much to do? <laughs> what kind of advice would you give as, as we depart? Yeah, I think I would go to the company val values and what I could find there because there you can probably also find the sustainability story and, uh, and then you can always stay true to your, yourself. Yeah, and I think I, I was just uh, had the pleasure to meet Gustav Stenbeck. If, if you don't know who he is, uh, you should look him up. He's really, really a uh, great person when it comes to understanding the, the sense of sustainability and business. He's currently an, an um, angel investor here in Sweden, and he used to work with Peter Stordal and at Nordic Choice. He actually became known as uh, Bacon uh, Gustav, so you can uh, all search <laughs> for that. But he said that, and I think that st stems so well in terms of how do you make sure it's really walk the talk and not talk, 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 and then people go in and don't understand anything of what you wrote, uh, uh, wrote on your nice website. And it's that, again, as also Christian said yesterday, uh, was that you, know, you can't replace a bad product or a bad service with sustainability. It's not a quick fix. It's same with data. You can't just say, oh, we're working with data. Okay. How? Like, what are the actions you take of it? Because otherwise, you just have a bunch of numbers and no sense of direction or no sense of purpose with it. And I think that's the same. So, like, I would all again advise, like, 
focus more on business uh, because I think we've been uh, pretty good as communicators to focus about the outside world, the perception, the storytelling, content marketing. But again, go back to your business, go back to what are we actually offering our customers today and how is that linked? How is this a more sustainable, better experience for our consumers? Uh, and I think if you don't, uh, if you're not able to connect those two dots, again, you're going to have an uphill battle to convince people to buy something out of sheer uh, goodwill or out of sheer that, oh yeah, but they seem nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I go to Max because I do think their burgers are better and I just tried your vegetarian ones and I, I was like, okay, it's not so hard, right? It's not about me sacrificing a part of my life. It's about choosing a product that delivers exactly what they promise to do. <laughs> it, it became Thank like you a so much. That was like a mic drop <laughs> moment. So <laughs> I think on that, let's give them all a round of applause, please. <laughs>